It is decision day for embattled Chinese property developer Evergrande. After expanding rapidly for years and building an empire that goes far beyond real estate, the company is on the brink of collapse. Evergrande is under crushing debt of more than $300 billion. It's borrowed aggressively to build out an empire of skyscrapers, hotels, electric car factories, food and drink processing plants. It even owns Guangzhou Football Club. Now, today could be crucial for the company. Evergrande has said it will make an interest payment worth 36 million US dollars to Chinese investors. But that's just one payment due. It also owes foreign investors over 84 million US dollars in interest. Evergrande hasn't said if it will make the payment. Here's more. In Hong Kong, Evergrande shares have jumped almost 20% after the troubled property giant had struck an agreement with Chinese bondholders. The announcement helped calm some investor concerns, but the world's most indebted developer still has to make a $84 million interest payment on an overseas bond on Thursday. Evergrande may be paying this smaller amount of money to creditors in exchange for more time to solve its internal problems. Evergrande desperately needs to raise cash to pay off at least some of its $300 billion debt load. And it does have a sprawling list of assets. More than a thousand real estate projects across China, an electric vehicle maker and even a soccer team. I can see it being chopped up, either sold off piece by piece, uh, something will be arranged. Uh, it's a matter of how long the Chinese government is going to let this process play out. Evergrande home buyers and contractors have protested recently at the company's headquarters in Shenzhen. They say they want their money back. So do thousands of investors around the world. Let's talk more about this with my colleagues Christy Platson in Frankfurt and Clifford Kunin here uh, in the studio. Clifford, let me start with you. How much time has this latest repayment bought the company? Um, it's bought them some time, but you sort of feel somehow that this is like a very small part of what is a much, much more serious problem. Um, it's, we're talking about 29% of Chinese GDP is based on real estate. Evergrande is one of the biggest of those. Um, and then it's coming out with this very small measure. And um, I think in real terms, it's just going to buy them a very small amount of time. But they've got much more, much deeper issues to address. Much deeper issues to address. Nevertheless, Christy uh, Platson in Frankfurt, I'm guessing markets are breathing a sigh of relief here. Well, there does seem to be consensus that we are going to avoid a worst case scenario in this situation. A week ago, we were talking a lot about this being China's Lehman Brothers moment. More and more people are saying that won't be the case. And so this has certainly had a soothing effect on markets. Um, as we just heard, they have reached an agreement for, for an initial payment. The details of that are unclear, but that does seem to have, uh, have calmed down the markets to some degree. Uh, Clifford, uh, over to you. Um, what is the government's reaction to this? We know that a lot of other Chinese uh, real estate companies are also highly indebted. Could the government step in here? Yeah, I mean, property is just, and real estate is so, it's, it's so important a part of the Chinese economy. And, you know, the market has grown like crazy for 25 years. We've never had really any price falls in China. So the, the government is clearly worried about what's going on. But how they'll intervene is harder to say. I think it's going to be kind of a mixed bag of measures, that they'll put a little bit of pressure on the state banks here and there. They'll give um, some kind of fudge to the overseas lenders. Um, and it'll be very difficult to see from outside. I mean, we've had no indications in the Chinese state media, for example, about any of this. So um, we're really looking into a black box. But um, I think the government will intervene, but it'll be in, a very, in very sort of subtle and mixed ways. Uh, Christy, in, in Frankfurt, uh, back to you. Um, Evergrande owes more than $80 million in interest to foreign investors. How likely is it that the company will make this payment? 
Well, Chris, I think we have to take a kind of a larger look at the situation here. I mean, we have that, that $84 million in interest. But if we look at the overall debt of this company, we're talking about over $300 billion in overall debt. And of that debt, only about $20 billion is to international creditors. So it does seem that domestic, uh, domestic debt is more pressing for Evergrande right now, though, of course, we do have this international bond coming due today. But um, as we said before, they do seem to be, uh, you know, reaching some sort of negotiations to handle these payments. Payments, what exactly that means, we don't know. For international markets, what is maybe more significant, now that we know that uh, we most likely won't be seeing a systemic uh, you know, f crash of the Chinese economy, um, really it's just like Clifford was talking about, uh, we're seeing a, a sort of new style of intervention from the government after years of just colossal, uh, largely unregulated growth from these markets. And uh, a lot of international players had really seen this as a, a future sort of investment hmm. uh, strategy. China. So this is a, a big change for those markets. Clifford, back to you. A Lehman-like crash uh, may have been avoided here, but nevertheless, what is the impact of all of this on the Chinese economy? Well, um, I think it's interesting. I mean, you know, we, we, we're talking about, I mean, Evergrande is 3%. The, the debts are about 3% of the Chinese economy. It's a huge amount. And I think that... Um, I, I think the, the effect, overall effects on the Chinese economy, we become kind of addicted to uninterrupted uh, Chinese growth. And I think that that situation is slightly changing now. People are starting to ask deeper and more penetrating questions about what's actually going on in the Chinese economy. And we've been talking about Lehman Brothers and the parallel there with Evergrande. But maybe people are going to start asking questions about who's too big to fail here. Is it, is it Evergrande or is it the Communist Party itself that may be too big to fail? Clifford Coonan and Christy Platson in Frankfurt. Thanks to both of you.